Hi, welcome to episode 441 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. And I have an Etsy shop where I sell my hand spun yarns and knitting patterns. Hi, how are you? I hope that you are doing well. It is Monday, September 18th, and it has been decidedly fall-like here for the last few days. We had some rain over the weekend, and it was in the high 50s this morning, and it was just lovely. So I have been settling in. I finished a few things. I've thought out a few things. I don't have a ton to show you this week, but I have a little bit. Um, and I am getting ready to do lots of work for the office this week. I work for Missouri Star Quilt Company and they are celebrating their 15th anniversary this week and there is a big party and celebration over the next several days up in Hamilton, Missouri which is about 90 miles from where I live and so normally I work from home but for this week I'm gonna go up there and participate in birthday bash so um, help help direct traffic and um, you know volunteer some time to uh, help out at the party and be part of some of the festivities so that is kind of fun for me it's like a little field trip and I haven't been up there that much actually I just went up for the first time last week um, to pick up my employee badge and a few other things I hadn't been up there before um, and so I got to walk through quilt tent and all the different quilt stores and I bought some Halloween fabric um, and I'm trying to think what else I it was just it was a nice day and like I said a little bit of a field trip sometimes um, there's plenty of work that definitely feels like work but every so often when you work in a crafty place um, there are some fun things that feel like fun like taking the day off to go up and get my employee badge and go visit the quilting stores I mean how can that not be fun so I hope that you are doing well, that you're staying healthy, um, and that you are finding lots of uh, crafty mojo. I Mine is still sort of missing in action, but I managed to do a few things. So um, I have a finished object this week, which I hesitate to even call it a finished object because, well, it is finished, but um, it's not that much knitting. Anyway, I did finish the socks that I had started for um, miles, and so I have those here. These are um, just a plain pair of socks. Miles uh, asked for pink socks this year, so he is getting pink socks. And this is a uh, yarn from Ba La Jolla. It's 100%, uh, or sorry, it's from Ba Yarns, and the uh, yarn is La Jolla. It's their sock weight yarn, and it is 100% superwash merino. I cannot remember the colorway name for it, um, but it is pink and red, and then it's got um, a few little speckle points of some darker blue and darker cherry and a few orange flecks and so it's just, it's really pretty pinks, cherries, corals, etc. And um, I had part of one or one done last week when I talked to you and I knocked out the second one this week. Actually, I only had like half done last week because I finished the toe on Wednesday and then I knocked the second one out in the last day or two. So uh, these are top down. They were 52 stitches on size zero needles. They might be a little bit big for him this year, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, basically a two by two rib up at the top, a slip stitch, uh, gusset and heel flap from the top down and then a rounded toe and these are ready to go. Um, they don't have any nylon in them and I talked about that a little bit last week. Um, to be honest he probably won't be wearing them long enough for them to wear through um, because he's growing so fast right now. He'll be um, seven in a few weeks. Um, and so he's growing so fast that um, he'll be out of these and onto the next pair in one season. So, um, so I'm not worrying too much about the nylon, but those, those were what he requested. Those are what he's getting. So, um, that is pretty much what I worked on this week. I also worked on a lot of chicken things, um, which I did not bring to show you. Um, and then I had a big winding party over the weekend to start a bunch of new projects, which you will see shortly. So, um, well, well I haven't cast them on, but I'm going to talk about them right now. So now that Miles' pink socks are done, it's time to do socks for Roxy. And my girl loves teal right now, so I went through the stash, and this actually is, I don't want to say deep stash, but it's somewhat deep stash, um, because I bought it during um, a ply away, uh, and ply away, <clears throat> I bought it from a ply away before the pandemic, so it was probably 2018 or 2019. 
and it is some stock yarn from October House um, and they are a lovely dyer. I don't know where they're based out of but they have come to ply away most years and um, this is their Sojourn sock which is actually it's thin. It's 460 yards to 100 grams so it's it's definitely on the thinner side. This is Superwash Merino and Nylon and the colorway is Pacific and that is this great teal. So I wound that up. It doesn't have as much pizzazz and um, excitement as these do because these are kind of speckled and have a little bit of interest in them. So I'm thinking I might do a very, very simple pattern, maybe a blueberry waffle socks or something else, just something that will have a little bit of pattern um, since the color, I mean, it's definitely a semi-solid. You can see um, uh, uh, subtle gradations in the color and you can see my ball winder had a little bit of a mishap at the very end. You can see um, that there are subtle gradations, but it's uh, overall, it's just plain teal. So I was thinking what I'll probably do is pick um, a little bit of a pattern, something that's not too difficult to remember, and I'll probably only do it on the um, leg, um, and then I'll probably make the um, the top of the foot and the obviously the sole um, without pattern. I could extend the pattern onto the top of the foot, but I actually like the way socks fit better in my shoes when it's just plain stockinette on the top and bottom, and then I just do whatever I want for the cuffs. So I'm going to find something simple and get these cast on. I have a bunch of socks to knit before the holidays, um, and so this is the next set, and um, I'm actually going to be staying up in Hamilton for a couple nights this week because it's such a long drive um, and I had some hotel points, I got a hotel room. Um, and so I will have a few evenings where I can watch cable TV and lay in bed and knit. Um, and so that is what I'm gonna work on there along with I'm bringing um, one specific chicken project with me. So um, my hope is that I will finish a good chunk of the chicken project um, and that then I will get started on these socks. So I should have something to show you um, by next week. So the next project that I'm casting on is another sample. I got um, a box of yarn this week and I really need to swatch this one because I am going to be working on a colorwork sweater. So the pattern is called Antique Flora and it is by Wool and Pine and it is a top-down yoke sweater and then it has a very intricate um, colorwork yoke. So there will be yoke shaping. Um, I don't know too many details. I haven't read through the whole thing but there is like a fairly intricate chart and it's a fairly deep chart as well. Um, and so I will be working on that. And um, the one thing that is kind of interesting about this pattern is that the pattern itself calls for using a DK weight yarn and then also holding fingering yarns doubled. And so what they do is they hold um, for a regular for the regular main color body of the sweater, they hold the DK yarn. And then for the color work, they actually hold two fingering skeins together to create kind of a marled um, color work section. And so um, uh, the dyer that I work for is Zen Yarn Garden. I knit samples for them. And so what they decided to do was they decided a couple things. They decided that they wanted to do that, but then what they decided is that I should also hold the um, body of the sweater doubled. So the whole thing is going to be done in fingering weight. It's all going to be doubled. Um, and so I am using the following colors, which I just wound up. I have not swatched yet. My hope is to swatch tonight or tomorrow before I leave town and then get started working on the sweater when I come back on set. I come back late Friday night. Um, so I, I hope I will get to work on the sweater Saturday and Sunday if I go ahead and swatch now and figure out what I need. So the main body color is going to be this gorgeous teal. Um, and this is um, a semi-solid skein, but, but mostly solid. Sorry, I, I didn't quite finish up the ends, but this is the teal that I'm going to be using for the main body of the sweater. And then for the color work, I'm going to hold together. Um, this is a teal speckle, so it is white with a lot of different blues and teals. And then I'm also holding together um, this, it's called teal one of a kind, and that means that it is variegated. So the colors that are in this are also in this, and the thought is I hold them together to create some kind of light, lightly marled color colorway that will show up against the dark teal. So um, I am a little bit skeptical. So I am, I am trusting the color choice and making my swatch to see what happens. I feel like the two of these are going to be awfully close to this one. And so I feel like um, 
basically the color work may not show up that well, but um, I have been proven wrong before. I mean, obviously the color work would show up in something like this because there is a huge contrast. So I'm waiting to see what will happen as I put these two together along with my teal. And so again, my plan is to swatch this evening or tomorrow and wash it and let it dry. And then when I come home on Saturday, um, be able to start the sweater. So I have multiple walls of each and this is Zen Yarn Garden super fine fingering which is their 90 percent um super fine uh 90 percent super fine superwash merino 10 percent nylon about 400 yards to a skein um and you can find zen yarn garden at zenyarngarden.com they are a canadian company but they are right near the u.s border so oftentimes they will ship u.s orders within the u.s because they can literally go across the bridge um and they have i think they have a post office box in the u.s as well so that is living in my llama bag and um I love this bag and uh I can't remember does it have a tag it doesn't have a tag it doesn't have a tag this was um a bag maker on Etsy that I really loved and I will try and remember the name and put it in the show notes but that is um my new project my second new project, which I don't know how quickly I'm going to get to, um, but I wanted to show you is I talked to you in the last few weeks about the fact that I have baby knits and that I, um, that I would like to knit a baby blanket and that I was kind of thinking about designing my own and then releasing it as a pattern. And what I did is I went ahead and um, I ordered some yarn, which I showed you last week. It's Melabrigo Rios and it is in the uh, denim colorway. And actually I... I don't know what I did with that bag. Um, I I wound up the first two skeins so that I could alternate them because I always alternate when I use um, Malabrigo and other indie dyed yarns. Um, Malabrigo is kettle dyed, so they put all the skeins in the kettle. And sometimes there's subtle difference between um, the where the skeins are in the kettle and how much dye they get, so I like to alternate those. Um, but I had lots of Rios left over because if you've been with me for a little while, you know that I just knit um, sweaters in Malabrigo Rios for both my niece and my nephew for their birthdays, which are coming up. So I had some of it left over and I decided to just go ahead and swatch in um, one of the colorways that I had left over so that I would be ready to go when the yarn got here. So this is my swatch. So the inspiration for this was I really wanted to do something with chevrons um, and I kind of was feeling a little bit Charlie Brown inspired, you know, that that one large chevron on the shirt. Um, and so I decided I wanted to play with a little bit of texture. This is very, very simple. Um, it's just a uh, stockinette and reverse stockinette stitch pattern. It's a small chart that is repeated a couple times in here and will be repeated throughout the blanket. And the other thing that I decided was that I think I thought I and I do, um, wanted to do an I-cord edging around it. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do like a garter stitch edging or precisely what I wanted to do. And so I went ahead and did an I-cord edging and I sort of cast on along the bottom and worked my way up to the top. And then when I was done, did the I-cord finish. And it gave me a really nice swatch that is a really cute little mini representation for the blanket. So obviously I'm going to knit a baby blanket that is bigger than this and I'm going to knit it in the yarn that I chose. I'm hoping you can see the pattern here. Um, it is kind of subtle, but in person you can definitely see it um, and so what I need to do now is uh, do the math so that is the piece that I haven't done I haven't calculated gauge I haven't um, weighed the swatch to figure out um, how much yarn I used in this swatch and how many square inches I have here um, so that I can do the math and guesstimate where I should cast on um, I'm aiming for a roughly square blanket but we'll have to see um, how the math goes you know because I have to check the pattern repeats and whatnot and um, see what I can do so this is just waiting for me to sit down and do a little bit of math to come up with my cast on number and then I can go ahead and cast on this blanket and have it in the works um, but right now I want to get the uh, the color work sweater uh, on the needles first and uh, keep going on my um, socks I will not need this blanket this baby is due there are two babies. This baby is due Christmas Eve. So I have a little bit longer on this one versus um, all the My Family Exchanges gifts at Thanksgiving because um, we don't celebrate Christmas. 
I come from a Jewish family. <laughs> my family doesn't celebrate Christmas, but my sister and I both married men who are not Jewish. So we personally celebrate Christmas with our in-laws, but our big family holiday has always been Thanksgiving. So um, we meet up all in person at Thanksgiving. This year we're going to California again. And um, we always have a pre-Hanukkah celebration. Um, the Jewish holidays, if you don't know, the Jewish holidays are based on a lunar calendar. And um, so in the uh, Roman calendar, this, here, here you go, a little bit of trivia. In the Roman calendar, we have months that have different numbers of days, right? So some months have 30, some months have 31, February has 28, except when it has 29, and then all the months in total add up to 365 days a year, or 365 and a quarter-ish. So the way the Jewish calendar works is it is a lunar calendar. So um, they have 28 day months and every fourth year they add an extra month to make up for all the days that um, they lose to, you know, partial day uh, the, for all the days that aren't covered within each of those years. So each year they come out off by a few different days and then they, they pick up a 13th month every fourth year. So um, that is why uh, Jewish holidays often rotate in the calendar because um, they're not on a set day of the year that always falls on the same day of the year. So for instance, well, okay, Thanksgiving is a bad example, but July 4th is always July 4th. Great. Um, even Thanksgiving is somewhat set. It's the third Thursday of the month. Third Thursday of the month, fourth Thursday of the month, third Thursday, fourth Thursday, I think fourth Thursday of the month. Now I'm questioning myself. And so it's always roughly at the same time each year. Because the Jewish calendar moves so much, because of because it only takes into account 28-day months, something like Hanukkah, some years can be at the same time of Christmas, and some years can start like right after Thanksgiving. So um, it moves. It's kind of exciting. I always have to check the dates every year. Um, so what we do is at Thanksgiving, we have Thanksgiving on Thursday, and then on Friday or Saturday, we have Hanukkah. We make potato pancakes. We light the candles, even though technically it's not a holiday. We we time shift, um, and although occasionally some years it is a holiday and some years Hanukkah does start that early. Um, and then we exchange Hanukkah gifts. So um, when I talk about crafting for my niece and nephew and the little, uh, you know, the little ones, um, I have to get all of those done before Thanksgiving because that's when we meet. Um, so yeah. So anything that I need to do for around Christmas, I actually still have another month to do. Anyway long story. Um, so I am going to work on the sample sweater, but I'm also going to try and work on this baby blanket in between. Um, and as soon as the baby blanket is done, I will take photos. I will uh, write up the pattern, get it tech edited, and get it available on Ravelry and in my Etsy shop. So um, if you like baby blankets, if you like kind of um, fun textured baby blankets, if you just want to not think about anything and have me give you a number to cast on and a little chart to follow, um, then this will be right up your alley. So that is kind of what's coming to my needles in the next few months. Um, I have some other things that I'm thinking about for me. I still haven't felt that full kind of siren call of fall, um, although I pulled out some yarn that I bought in New Zealand last night, um, and over the weekend I was looking for um, patterns that I thought might work well with it. And I found a really, really cute kind of vest pattern. And so I'm thinking that might be the next thing on my needles, but I don't know. Um, November nanny, November 1st, Nanny Swaymo will be here before we know it. Today is September 18th, which means I have a month and a half. Um, and depending on everything else that I want to get done between now and Thanksgiving, it is, you know, there's just so much going on. I just don't know when I'm going to get to cast on something for myself. But I am excited that there are some things that I want to think about. So I just realized that just like last week, I forgot to do the tea and I always do the tea first, but apparently my brain is faulty and I don't know how this works, even though I'm on episode 441. So the tea today is Peach Bellini from Republic of Tea. It is a uh, black tea with peach and champagne flavoring and it is absolutely delightful. It reminds me of late summer and peaches and actually it's really funny. So my husband generally does the grocery shopping and he does not enjoy peaches and I absolutely love 
of peaches. And I was in the grocery store yesterday because I went grocery shopping and I saw that there were a few peaches and they were of course very expensive because August is peak peach season and I realized that I had missed peak peach season and that I should have gone to the market because I would have bought myself some peaches. So I was very sad so I pulled out my peach bellini tea today and it does taste like peach and I am drinking it in my Oeve all day mug which of course is always perfect for a Monday um, and I've got a little um, coffee and nosh except actually it's tea and nosh so and I don't have a nosh but I had um, popcorn chips earlier so those count so here we go that whole thing was very anticlimactic anticlimactic climatic climactic I'm basically at the end of the podcast so I do not have any spinning to show you I did get started on a braid that I got from Nitty and Color, which I have showed you for the past couple weeks. And it is just like rainbow neon and black and it is gorgeous and so much fun. This is two ounces. I put the other two ounces on the wheel. I'm maybe half done with it. So I probably still have three ounces left to spin. I won't be home much this week, so I probably won't get a lot of spinning done, but I might get a little bit and I might have a little more to show you by the time we net chat next Monday. Um, so that is kind of what I'm working on. What I did do this week because I didn't spin this is I did go back and spin some more white for um, the chickens. And so uh, I got what I needed to done and I skeined that and washed it and everything. So now I'm set to um, finish the current chicken that I'm working on, which I'm really happy about because um, I, I love the overall look of this particular type of finished chicken that we do. Um, but it's a lot of work. It's spinning and it's knitting and it's weaving in a bazillion ends and it's all kinds of stripes and we're making a bigger one this time than we usually make. So um, it has been a lot of work and I am happy when this project will come to an end and I can move on to a few others. So um, right now I'll be working on this and I'm not sure what I'll spin next. I have a bunch of single braids that I'm going to get into. Um, and so yeah, we'll just see. So I think that's about it for me for the week. Um, I hope that you are having a lovely week. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you have found some crafting mojo. If you find mine under the couch, please uh, send it back to me. I'll even pay, you can send it COD. I'll take care of it um, because honestly, I'm, I'm hoping that I will kind of get back into it. For, for the longest time, I was kind of, um, my husband goes to bed at nine and I was knitting from like nine to midnight and listening to books and I had this whole thing going and it kind of fell apart in the last couple months and now I listen to some books and go to bed early and I don't know, I just haven't, I don't know if it's that I haven't been excited about what I'm working on or precisely what's going on, but it's just, it's it's not working. Although I will say um, the other thing that I forgot and I did not, I purposely did not bring it this time because it's a whole mess. Um, I have been sewing, I have been working on my Jelly Roll rug and the deal is that the first weekend I sewed all the strips together and I showed that to you last week. And this weekend step was basically turning it into a tubing that is filled with um, quilt batting. So it's like kind of squishy and soft and then you sew like right down the middle of it. So basically you take those strips that I had and you fold them in half um, and then you open them up and you fold both ends towards the center. So basically you're almost folding it in fourths but what you're doing is the way you're folding it, you are enclosing the outer edges at the center um, and so you lay the strip out and then you lay a piece of batting on it and then you fold each side towards the middle and then you fold it in half again and then you sew straight down that line. Um, and I did that and it's in a big like unruly pile on my dining room table and basically the next step that I take is I start winding it on itself and turning it into a rug and sewing the edges, zigzagging the edges together to create the rug. So that is what I hope to do this next weekend so that then I can show you. But right now, like I said, it's in a big, um, um, like crazy to be pile on my on my dining room table and I was supposed to wind it up into a ball and I just didn't and um yeah so I have been sewing um and maybe that's taking a little bit of my knitting mojo because it's just something different to do so I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead um I will talk to you again soon and until I do I will say happy knitting happy spinning happy sewing and finally happy sipping and I'll see you next time Bye.